So I recently changed the order in our dietary summary for our weight loss and metabolic health clinic. So now the first point and so the most important thing you do to make a change in order to become healthy and lose fat is cut out vegetable oils from your diet. Soybean oil, sunflower oil, safflower oil, corn oil, canola oil, cottonseed oil, peanut oil, grapeseed oil, rapeseed oil, and so on. Um, these oils are very high in omega-6 linoleic acid, which cannot be burned as fuel, but accumulates in our cells and causes weight gain and disease. It actually turns out that it causes insulin resistance. It also turns out that it causes neurologic uh, disorders. Um, so the reason that I changed this, um, that the number one step is to cut these oils out, is that I found in my patients that were trying to lose fat and become healthier, that this was the biggest hindrance that they had. It also made them crave foods. It made them eat more. It um, contributed so significantly to their uh, eating patterns that uh, once we cut those out, people did a lot better and they became healthier, but it does take time because these fats, they, uh, they sit in, in our fat cells and you know again, we don't really metabolize them, so they can sit there for up to two years or so. So it's a slow process to really get, get rid of them. So um, what do we replace them with? And again, many cardiologists might still find this very controversial and many traditional nutritionists are gonna freak out, but the best fats to replace these oils with are butter, beef tallow, coconut oil, and 100% pure avocado oil, and 100% pure extra virgin olive oil. Those I would only recommend in small amounts. I did another video about this a lot of times when we buy them. They're not pure, they have other oils in there, and they might be expired and oxidized, so I don't really think that they're the biggest staple of our diet when it comes to fats. So um, how long have we known that these oils, these vegetable oils might be problematic? And you can go back all the way um, to 2015 or, or, or longer. And it was actually quite interesting. So there was actually a study that uh, was published by the University of um, California, Riverside. And um, what they found was, you know, they did a study with uh, rodents and they had four groups of rodents. And um, they had one group that had a diet that was very high in soybean oil. And again, soybean oil, is one of the vegetable oils that's very, very high in this omega-6 linoleic acid, uh, as are most vegetable oils, but that's just one of them. And that's also one oil that we use in most of our food today. So it's um, you know an oil that we have in most products when we think about fats these days. The second group of rodents was fat, uh, a diet uh, where the fat was coconut oil, which is a saturated fat, it's a tropical saturated fatty acid. And you know, we still have this word saturated fat, it almost sounds like a, like a bad word. Um, so they gave them a, a diet high in that. And they had two other groups. They had also soybean oil or coconut oil, but, and the soybean oil in the third group also had um, a high amount of fructose and the coconut oil in the fourth group also had a high amount of fructose. So it was either soybean oil or coconut oil, and then the third and fourth group were soybean oil plus fructose and then um, coconut oil plus fructose. And the results were really fascinating and you know very much went against what they kind of expected. Um, so they looked at these rodents you know, throughout their whole lifespan and um, saw kind of how they developed. And the interesting part was that the rodents that were fed the high soybean diet had the biggest issues. Um, so they're writing here, compared to mice on the high coconut oil diet, mice on the high soybean diet showed increased weight gain, larger fat deposits, a fatty liver with signs of injury, diabetes and insulin resistance, all of which are part of the metabolic syndrome. Fructose in the diet had less severe metabolic effects than soybean oil, although it did cause more negative effects in the kidney and a marked increase in prolapsed rectums, a symptom of inflammatory bowel disease which like obesity is on the rise. So this is very fascinating. So again, uh, you would expect, oh, the uh, uh, rodents that were fed, uh, fed the um, coconut oil, saturated fats, that they would do a lot worse, but no, it was actually really the soybean oil. And um, again, this is just in rodents, of course, this was in 2015. Um, rodents are not, uh, mice are not people, that's absolutely correct, however, um, if you want to follow a mammal throughout its lifespan and you have a significant change in one of the things that they're eating and to influence this, I would argue it's almost impossible to do this very thoroughly in humans. I mean, you know, we cannot lock humans in a cage for the rest of their life and feed them 
you know, this is not going to happen, obviously, for many, many reasons. Um, so we usually go back to food questionnaires. We ask, well, what have you had over the last whatever months in terms of this item and this item? And that is not very precise. So here we have a very, very tight control over the entire lifespan of these rats. And then later, as they were dissected, they could really look at the organs. They could look at everything. Besides the insulin resistance and the issues mentioned here, they also found neurologic issues. They found that the mice on the soybean diet had um, a lot of issues like um, in, in humans, it would be autism or Parkinson's disease. So they were neurologic issues. They did um, study this and found that the soybean oil really influenced about a hundred different genes that were responsible for neurologic function in a negative way. So here you have now, uh, besides the insulin resistance, you have uh, a neurologic issues in these, in these uh, mice. So um, there were other studies that had similar findings and then we understand more and more um, how this works and why it is. And um, it's a bit complicated, but you know, again, these um, omega-6 linoleic acid containing oils, and when we look at vegetable oils, they're very high in this. So um, they're somewhere between 20 to 40 or 45 percent of these oils are linoleic acid. Um, and that's in stark contrast to animal fats. When you, for, for example, look at beef tallow or you look at butter, you know, about 2 percent is omega-6 uh, um, uh, uh, fats. Here, the omega-6 is, is much, much, much higher. Um, and when we look back to how was our diet traditionally, when we were hunters and gatherers, for example, this was really more for one to one ratio back then, where you had one part omega three and one part omega six. Then, you know, as of the early 1900s, it began to change. We also had the um, delightful onset of Crisco, which is, um, you know, basically comes from cottonseed oil. And um, that, why did we have cottonseed oil all of a sudden? Well in the harvest of cotton, the seeds were left over, they didn't know what to do with them. And they said, hey, if you put some chemicals in there, we can extract oil from them. And you can't just squeeze them out, use hexane or some other uh, toxic chemical to take the oil out. And then they said, well, what do we do with this? Well, first they used it to lubricate industrial machinery. And if you want to hear the whole story about this, there is uh, a journalist, uh, Nina Teicholz, who's fantastic. And she wrote a book about this. And she also gives lectures and she talks about the onset of how do we all of a sudden have these wonderful vegetable oils? So that was the onset. And anyway, so as of the early 1900s, our percentage of omega-6 was steadily rising. Now, remember, we need very, very little of this. There's a reason why most animal fats have very little linoleic acid. And um, uh, we only need them, again, we don't burn them. We only need them as structural and signaling molecules. But we've been steadily increasing our intake of this from about, let's say, uh, two grams a day in the early 1900s to about 80 grams a day today, which is insane. So for many Americans, the majority of their fats come from these oils today. Um, and that has been quite problematic because as we've seen the steep increase in these oils, when you follow the curves, you see that from the you know, early 1900s to today, that is a really exponential function as when you look at the consumption of soybean oil, canola oil, and so on, we have way more today than we ever had in the early 1900s. Um, at the same time, in a similar fashion, we have a rise of diabetes, obesity, heart disease, cancer, autoimmune disorders, neurologic disorders. And um, while we can always say that correlation doesn't equal causation, and I would agree with that, here the correlation is huge. I mean, it's a very, very strong correlation. And then we also understand more about the um, biochemistry behind it. You know, we understand why, uh, why is this happening? Why are these fats, uh, or what are they doing to the fat cells? Um, now, I'm a simple primary care physician, so this is way beyond my field. But when you look at um, how do they behave in our cells, it is usually that they accumulate in our cells. Again, we don't burn them. We don't really use them much because we only need very little of this. So the bulk of it accumulates. And actually also it, it oxidizes, it uh, uh, you know, becomes, the, these oils change while they're sitting in there in a negative way. You know, they become oxidized. They, they, there's um, species that are produced that are quite damaging to our cells. So the fat cell, instead of normally growing and working and dividing, it uh, grows. It becomes larger. They cause hypertrophy. So these cells become huge. And um, the cell, uh, it is thought now, at the cell level now, over time, that's where we develop insulin resistance. So we always for operating under the hypothesis that insulin resistant is insulin resistance comes in from eating too much sugar, too much carbs, 
and then at some point you know our pancreas burns out and we just can't make enough insulin and now we have insulin resistance and what's the first thing we give in someone that starts to develop type 2 diabetes we give them medications that make the insulin work better or we give medications that um, allow more insulin to be present or we actually end up giving insulin as an injection later um, but we don't address the issue we don't address the issue at the level of the cell we know that as people lose uh, fat as they lose weight they become less insulin resistant so people that have type 2 diabetes when they diet and exercise and they lose body fat their diabetes becomes better and we always thought again this had to do with the um, carbohydrate intake but it seems now more and more it really is uh, caused by these oils that accumulate in our cells and make our cells insulin resistant so it's at the cellular level um, I see in my clinic patients that have a hard time losing uh, body fat and you know that have metabolic syndrome they might have other issues as we cut out those oils uh, religiously I mean you know they avoid they read every package they avoid buying packaged food you know they go back to really really simple whole foods that includes you know some some meats butter tallow as I mentioned before in terms of carbohydrates they simplify it as well you know fruit is always okay like uh, in, in in small amounts earlier part of the day and then oats maybe and maybe like a simple rye bread so simple single ingredient carbohydrates like fruit um, oats or maybe rye as a vasa rye bread that I usually recommend that's it that's all the carbs they have they cut out the simple sugars they cut out the refined flours and all that and then in terms of fats again they kick out all those uh, vegetable oils and stick with uh, simple animal fats or coconut oil uh, small amounts of avocado oil or olive oil and they drastically lose body fat they become healthier their hemoglobin a1c becomes better their fasting insulin becomes better it is a huge difference and that's why i move that point to the number one of the list because i think it is so critically important to start with cutting out the um, ingredient that makes us insulin resistant that makes us become fat um, that makes us starving all the time hungry because remember we don't burn this this is not you know uh, uh, calories that we easily use so they're sitting around and they're causing disease so you know we become more hungry and since we're insulin resistant sugar now doesn't get in the cells so we can't burn that so we're eating more because now we're now we're starving so it's a very vicious cycle and cutting out these oils um, has been very very valuable um, in my clinic and I think it should be the most important thing you do um, when you reevaluate your diet and if you want to lose fat and become healthy I'd highly recommend to start right there